From the Selfish Path to Romance, download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Of course I love her, but it's a different kind of love. I mean, it doesn't burn with the passion and intensity of a Tristan and Isolde. It's more comfortable, more familiar. Maris and I are old friends. We can spend an afternoon together. Me at my jigsaw puzzle, she at her auto harp. Not a word spoken between us and be perfectly content. You know, it's the stuff that most of us don't talk about. I want to tell you, I went on a cruise recently, and I sat down at my table with my parents there and with a bunch of strangers, and I picked up a book to read, and I'm sitting with my husband, and the book is called The Sex-Starved Marriage, Boosting Your Marriage Libido, A Couple's Guide. Now, my father cracked up. He had to get the camera out and take pictures, and, and it became the topic of conversation. And is that a problem in your relationship? Well, with me today is Michelle Weiner Davis, the author of this fabulous, fabulous book. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Thanks for having me. Michelle. Well, you're brave. I have to tell you, I don't know if I would go on a cruise with the book with that title and that jacket. You're oh, brave. You know. Oh, it's a beautiful cover too because you there's so much empathy with the man and the woman you can just it's a, you have a beautiful picture on the cover so <laughs> anyway you go out and see it if you're listening to this it's a wonderful book um tell me what is a sex starved marriage i mean that resonated with me right away when i you know as a therapist i can just think of so many of the couples that i work with that are sex starved but that's a wonderful term well, a sex-starved marriage is one where one spouse is desperately longing for more touch, more physical closeness, more sexuality, and the other spouse, for a variety of reasons, isn't interested and thinks to him or herself, so oh, what's the big deal? It's just about sex. But to the spouse yearning for more touch, it's huge because it's about feeling wanted. It's about feeling masculine if I'm a man, feminine if I'm a woman. It's about feeling whole. It's about feeling connected. And when two people have this great misunderstanding between them, what often happens is that intimacy on all levels tends to drop out of the relationship. They stop spending time together. They stop doing things together. They stop laughing at each other's jokes. They don't make eye contact with one another anymore. They stop being friends. And when that happens, it truly puts the marriage at risk of infidelity and divorce. The good news is that there's, there are many things that people can do to feed their sex star of marriage and to bring back the closeness both physically and emotionally. What, um, here, there's one quote that I want to read. This is your, a quote from your book, The Sex Star of Marriage. It's Michelle Weiner Davis. I am convinced that one of the grossest misunderstandings about sex is the belief many women have that men desire sex because they just want or better yet, need a physical release. Mm. It is true that men and some women love an occasional quickie without much emotional hoopla. However, I've been privileged to hear men describe the way they really feel when the wives aren't interested. And if you've assumed your husband wants sex just to get off, what I've heard will undoubtedly surprise you. Tell us some of the things you've heard, Michelle. Well, I, it's easy for me to do that because I'll tell you about a couple I had in here a few weeks ago. A couple had been married for 15 years, and they were trying to sort of fine-tune their marriage. And at one point, um, the husband, who was this very soft-spoken, gentle kind of guy, said, you know, really, there really is only a two-hour window of opportunity on Friday nights between 10 and 12 where she might be interested in having sex. So at all other times, I don't even bother approaching her. And I looked over at her, and she was chuckling, and she said, you know, he's absolutely right. That's it. Friday nights, that's it. And without chuckling, I turned back to him, and I said, tell me, what's that like for you? What has that been like for you? And for the first time in their marriage, he took a deep breath, and he looked at her and he said, you know, when I reach out for you and you're not there for me, all I can tell you is that it makes me think that you don't love me in the way that you used to when we got together. It makes me feel unattractive, and I feel like I'm not a man because I can't really please you. And then when you go to sleep and I hear your breathing and I'm lying there staring up at the ceiling, there is no 
no lonelier feeling in the world than just lying there in bed next to you. I feel so lonely in this marriage. And to this woman's credit, I, I just give her so much credit. As he spoke, her eyes filled with tears, and she reached out and grabbed his hand. And what she said to him was pretty amazing. She said, you know, during all these years, whenever you touch me, what I do is I think to myself, am I in the mood? Am I not in the mood? I never, not once, have thought about what it's like to be you and be in your shoes. And she said, I am so, so sorry. So she cried, and he cried, and although I've been at this for more years than I can count, I have to tell you that I cried as well. It was like a Kleenex fest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the truth is... I would be out of a job, and so would you, if more couples could have the kind of empathy that this woman exhibited in terms of really trying to understand your spouse's point of view, your spouse's feelings. That often doesn't happen in a sex star of marriage because both people are intent on blaming the other person for being wrong instead of finding solutions where they can meet in the middle. So it's awful when you talk about the grossest error, the grossest misunderstanding is a woman thinking that it's just a biological itch, that this guy is just nagging me like to scratch his shoulder all the time. It, it and, has, and, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and the man really wanting the, the tenderness and the closeness that, that the woman wants too. You bet. You know, by the way, it's it's kind of um, tricky here because although we're talking here about a man and a woman um, in terms of the woman, the man wanting more sexuality, so often in my practice these days it's just the opposite, um, where the woman is the one yearning for more touch and more physical closeness and the guy has shut down, um, and not just because of physical problems or f sexual performance problems, but because the guy has emotional issues, just like women do. The, the point, though, is whether it's a man or a woman, to assume that your spouse wants sex just so that they can have an orgasm is a gross misunderstanding. That so, Every person has a different love language, so to speak, that for some people it, um, you feel close to another because you have conversations, deep, meaningful conversations. For others, it's about spending time together. For yet others, it's a through touch, and unless you are going to be close physically, you're not going to feel connected. And the key to making marriages work isn't trying to get your spouse to see your way of doing things, but it's truly trying to understand your spouse's love language and express love in a language that's familiar to your spouse. And the good news about that is that in good marriages, it's really based on mutual caretaking. When you, when you stretch yourself outside your comfort zone to reach inside your spouse's world, Almost always it's reciprocal. And that's wonderful. So there is hope for people who feel that they've gone for years or maybe months or years or even a decade or so, that if they could open up and break the ice, if they could melt the ice and find some new ways to communicate, that they could rebuild their relationship again. I see it happen all the time. Yeah. Okay, well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. This is Michelle Weiner Davis, and she's the author of The Sex Starved Marriage, Boosting Your Marriage Libido, A Couple's Guide. It is a fabulous book. It's a must-read for both men and women. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Michelle. Thanks for having me. And there are wonderful tips that she'll give you in this book, and I'll give you just some teasers. The Nike solution, just do it. Embers versus fireworks. You don't expect fireworks all the time in romance. Expect to enjoy some embers, some subtle urges. Uh, act as if the seesaw effect, and I won't tell you what those are. You can get the book and read it. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner. You've been listening to The Rational Basis of Happiness. And if you want to ask me a question on our After Hours line, my number's toll-free, 1-877-DR-KENNER, D-R-K-E-N-N-E-R. -E -E you know what? I got to call her. No, wait, no. I'm calling her. No, wait. I shouldn't call her. But I want to. Again, I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner on the rational basis of happiness. See you again next week. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co author Dr. Edwin Locke. Spending leisure time together in compatible activities is a wonderful way to strengthen your love, whether it's dining out 
reading in bed together, going to the movies, attending concerts, playing sports, listening to music, or going on vacations. Taking time to deliberately bask in the enjoyment of one another's company is ultimately one of the most rewarding things you can both do. Even if you have different tastes, there are ways to make both of you happy. Some activities you can do with friends, but it is important that you and your partner do not routinely go your separate ways. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com. And you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com.